defining more complex tables with function of smart headers with Axario made to tag. Tables can occur in a really different way. And sometimes, as seen here, it's not enough to define the first row or the first column to be a header cell. Sometimes you have entries inside the table that define, for example, subsections of the table. In my table here, if I just define the first or the first two rows to be a header cell, it will just define everything that's below, but here in my section 2 area, that will be appropriate. Section 2 defines the area below and section 1 just defines this four table cells here. So it's not enough to just use the quick headers and define some values, you need to assign each cell to each table head. There are two different approaches you can use. You can use a top-down or the bottom-up. I first start with a top-down approach. You just go inside your table and first see what need to be defined as a header for which data cell. In this case, area A and area B just define all the entries in the normal cells here. In addition, section 1 and section 2 define several special cells that are below them. Knowing that, I just go inside my table, just put a cursor inside and in first place I activate the smart headers. Now it's only tagged by smart headers, but it's not defined yet. If you like to define all the cells, you need to activate the smart headers edit mode. Don't be frightened that all the colors disappear. This function will help you to easily define the header cells to the corresponding data cells. If you uncheck this box, the color will show up again. Now I start to tag the content. In first place, I just take my mouse and place it to the area A. You see a green highlight and what you can do now is just press the command key on Mac or control key on Windows and assign a data cell. I do it with the area A and section 1 entry 1 and the same thing I just put again my command key or control key and add the next one. Now both of the cells are assigned to area A as a header cell. Pressing command or control and clicking each of the cells will take a while, especially for huge tables. So what you can do in addition, you just press your key, click in a field and drag the mouse to the end of the cells. And as you can see, both cells are now related to the area A header cell. I show the same with area B. I press my command key, drag my mouse about all the content and then I stop pressing the command key and all the content is tagged. That's the approach where you take your header cell and assign data cells. You can use the same method reverse. So what I do now is I just click into some data cell and then I press shift command or shift control and assign a header cell. You can do it by cell by cell as I do it now. What you can do too is just mark two data cells and assign a header cell. For section two, I use a different approach again. I show you once again the up and down approach. So I just click on my section two, press my command key and mark all the related data cells. Now, if you like to take a look, if you tagged it the right way, just click into a cell and you will see the corresponding header cells, but you can click on a header cell too and you will see the corresponding data cells. Now let's jump to the next table. Before tagging the table, I once again need to know how to tag the table the right way. Therefore, I take an entry 20 to understand how the table should be tagged. 20 is defined with a value blue and blue is defined with a value eye color. The same here in the row, I got black and black is defined by hair color. So what I need to do now is define hair color as a table header for all the colors here, brown, blonde, black, red and total, and then define black as a value, as a table header value for all the entries in the row. Now I know how to tag the table, I can start. I just place my cursor inside the table. Then I switch to the smart headers and activate smart headers edit mode automatically the highlight feature will be enabled. 
I just press on the eye color and assign by pressing the command or control key all the corresponding cells. As you can see, I made a little mistake by tagging it. I assigned not only one row, I assigned three rows. There are several possibilities to deal with issues like that. What you can do in the easiest way, you just once again press Command or Control and once again click inside the cells. As you can see, you can deselect the assignment by clicking inside all the tables. Otherwise, the same way could be used by clicking it and dragging the mouse about all the entries you assigned the wrong way. Now, as my first assignment was correct, I switch to the hair color. It does not really matter how you tag it, if you're going line by line or row by row, just use the way you are comfortable with. By clicking on the hair color, I press my command or control key and assign all the values that are related to this entry. As you can see, if you click on all the table cells that have an assignment, by color you can see which cell is assigned to what header cell. Now I go one level deeper inside my table. I just mark all the entries in the first column and assign by pressing Command or Control what entries are related. So all the entries in my content here are related to the hair color. Same thing for the colors for the eye. I just mark all the entries, press my Command or Control key and assign all the entries. Now if I'm clicking on my value 20, as I spoke before, I can see I have direct headers here, it's blue and black. And blue and black are defined by separate headers, that's hair color and eye color. It's always good to check if you tag the table the right way. If you missed tag the table, as I spoke before about it, you can use the command key or the command and shift key on control key to reassign some table cells. Or what you can do too is, you can reset the table and bring it back to the starting point once again. There is no real recommendation when you need to reset your table, but normally, if you do not know where you checked it which way, it's most often the best way to just reset the table and start from the beginning point once again. To give you a little bit more understanding how the relation between tables work, I show you one last example. As you can see, this is a table that is more complex than the tables before. Like in most cases, the biggest challenge is to understand how the table works. I already tagged this table to give you an example how tagging can work. I just activate the highlight feature of made to tag. And as you can see, for example, here I have an entry and that's defined by several header cells. In my column here, for example, I have a direct header and I have a header at the top, and in my row I have a direct header, and a header for that header, and a header for that header. So it can be really complicated to understand how tables work, but if you get it the right way, just use the smart headers function and assign all the content for the corresponding header cells. I now will export in PDF and show you these results in Adobe Acrobat and PDF Go HTML. I now opened the PDF file which I exported with made to tag in Adobe Acrobat. As these tables make use of the so-called header IDs, unfortunately there is no way in Acrobat to see the relations between header cells and data cells in an easy way. So I will make use of the plugin PDF Go HTML to have a better overview between the relation of the header cells and data cells. Now PDF Go HTML rendered for me the text tree as an HTML page. As I can see, my header cells are marked in a darker color than the data cells. If I put my cursor on a data cell, I will see the directly related header cells. As you can see, the selected cell has two directly assigned header cells. The same for the header cells. I can put my cursor into a header cell and see the related data cells. In the second table, I can show you the same behavior with a little difference. If I put my cursor inside a data cell, I can see two related header cells. But 
PDF Go HTML only shows me the directly assigned header cells. If I have more relation between different header levels, I will only see them if I put a cursor into the header cells. So I will place my cursor into the assigned header cell and as I can see, this header cell has an assigned header cell too. This is the eye color and the cell itself has assigned data cells which I see below marked in a blue color. In difference to the usage of quick headers, I'm now able to have empty cells in the first row or first line and don't mark them as header cells, which is fully compliant to the PDF UA standard. My last example is quite more complex. This needs a bit of time to see all the relations. It may help you to zoom out in browser. Now I can put my cursor into some data cells and I will see the directly assigned header cells.